Welcome to another travel video with Lux Life London. Coming up, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about staying at the Royalton Resort and Spa in St Lucia. I'll be covering the rooms, the resort itself, food and entertainment, things to do in the local area and the journey there and back. I'll also take you through the two most popular day trips, the full day Toot Begay trip and the half day Sunset Pitons trip. And as a bonus, I'll give you a complete rundown of how you can earn points from the trip if you're a Marriott Bonvoy member, as the resort is part of Marriott. So stick around, give this video a like, and make sure you subscribe to get immediate notifications whenever new videos go live. Now, we live in the UK, so we booked with TUI, as that was where we found the best deal. It was our first time using TUI, and honestly, the whole experience was completely seamless. Um, we paid just under £1,800 per person for a one-week stay, and that included our flights, luggage, transfers, a swim-out room, and of course the all-inclusive food and drink package. We did upgrade to the swim-out room, but I think it only cost us maybe £100 extra per person. Um, and without giving too much away this early in the video, the holiday was worth every single penny that we paid and honestly I would definitely pay more to do 10 days in the future. Because we were two friends travelling together, we did request a twin room through the TUI live chat option after we'd booked and although the twin room wasn't guaranteed, thankfully it was honoured when we checked in. I mean, I love my friends, but I do not love them enough to share a bed for a whole week. <laughs> Um, we were also umming and ahhing whether to upgrade to Diamond Club or Hideaway, but we decided not to as we just couldn't really see the benefit for us. We are actually really glad that we didn't do this, and honestly I don't feel like we missed out on anything by not upgrading. When you book with TUI, you can actually choose to fly with TUI or pay extra to fly with British Airways. To be honest, I'm not a fan of BA, so I would never ever choose to pay extra to fly with them. Um, so we flew with TUI from London Gatwick, which is actually the nearest airport to us. Um, I live in South London and Sophie lives in Surrey, so it's super quick for us to get there. But if you're flying with TUI, I would 100% recommend eating a very large breakfast before the flight and take plenty of snacks on board with you. The food on TUI was horrendous, like probably the worst plain food I've ever eaten. Um, but I have definitely been spoiled with plain food in the past because most of my flights are long haul flights with Singapore Airlines and Emirates. But still, it was like almost inedible and the portions were so tiny that I spent most of the flight starving. So that's probably my top tip. Now, with the transfers, you need to prepare yourself because it is long. You have an 8 hour flight and then you have a 90 minute to 2 hour transfer depending on the traffic. The resort is literally the other side of the island to the airport. Um, you can choose to pay an extra 200 US dollars to get the helicopter transfer, but I've flown on helicopters twice before and I'm just not a big fan of them, they really scare me so we didn't do this. Um, it also only gets you to the resort an hour earlier, so there's like a 45 minute drive to the resort from the helipad. Um, there is always a boat transfer option as well, but we just decided not to spend the extra money um, because the road transfers were included in like the whole cost of the holiday. To be honest, the transfer was fine. We had a really lovely driver. The drive was beautiful, like absolutely stunning because it takes you across the whole island. But there were loads of mosquitoes on the bus. So I would definitely recommend spraying yourself with mozzie spray before you get on. When it comes to arriving at the resort, we landed in St Lucia maybe around 4.15pm in the afternoon and then arrived at the resort by maybe 7pm in the evening. But you're given a welcome cocktail on arrival and after giving the bellboys your name to check off, um, you then join the queue to actually check in. To be honest, check-in was fairly quick. Um, the resort is part of Marriott's autograph collection and as a Gold Elite Bonvoy member I was keen to at least earn some points from our trip. Um, I know that you don't usually get points for booking through third parties but they can add your membership number to the booking and even though you don't earn points for the entire stay because you have to pay like a very small amount of taxes when you check in I think it's like 64 US dollars for the whole week um, because you pay for that when you check in, you do actually get one night's worth of points for the stay. So I did actually get like a few thousand Marriott Bonvoy points for staying there, even though I didn't book it directly through Marriott. And you know, every little helps. 
Um, you also obviously earn points if you do like spa treatments and things like that. So that's also something to consider. Okay, now let's get into the room. So like I said earlier, we had a twin swim out room um, and we were given a room in block six. Our room number was 6005. And if you've seen my full room tour, you'll already know all of my thoughts on the room. So I highly recommend watching that full room tour video. I'll link it in the description below and you can check it out after if you haven't seen it already. But in short, it is a beautiful room. It's definitely a bit tired and broken around the edges. A couple of our plug sockets didn't work because they were loose. The room smelled quite musty. Um, block six is in shade all day. So we didn't actually use the swim up pool <laughs> because there was never any sun on it. The terrace was full of mosquitoes constantly because it was just still water in the shade all day. And like, I literally got so many bites every time I went out there, even just to dr like dry out my swimwear or my towel, I would put it out there and come in covered in bites. But the room was amazing for being close to the restaurants and the gym. Um, it was also really close to the beach and the pools. We went outside the school holidays, so there weren't many kids there. However, it would probably be quite a noisy block during school holidays because it is really close to the kids pool. So that's just something to consider. And I think you can actually choose your room and your block ahead of arrival. We just didn't know that until we found out later through the Facebook group. So definitely look into that. And I would definitely like, if I went back, I would definitely choose a room over the other side of the resort. But the room, like I said, the room is beautiful. The beds were ridiculously comfortable. The shower was amazing. And there was also loads of storage space for all of your clothes and things. Okay, this video, this video is going to be so long, but promise, like, stick with me. I'm going to give you everything you need to know. Um, it'll be worth it in the end. But let's get into the resort. So the resort itself is stunning. Like, oh, it is literally so beautiful. Like, I absolutely fell in love with it. It's really green. There's loads of palm trees and flowers and plants. The beach is like a really lovely secluded cove that can only be accessed by resort guests. Um, most of the hotels I've stayed elsewhere in the Caribbean have been like very barefoot luxury, but the Royal Tin is polished, like so polished. It feels new, it feels luxurious, it feels clean. Um, it was just a very relaxing place to spend a week. There are a total of eight swimming pools, including the hideaway and diamond club pools. Um, and then there are six swimming pools for kind of everybody. Four of them are connected to each other, but like on kind of tiered levels. And two of the pools have swim up bars, which was honestly my favorite thing. I loved chilling in the pool and then going and sitting on a seat in the water and ordering a cocktail. It was so much fun, like it completely made my holiday. Now for me, food is the most important part of a holiday and oh my gosh you guys, the food here! Oh, it was hands down the best all-inclusive food I have ever eaten. No joke, I've stayed at a number of all-inclusives and this was definitely the best. Um, there's a coffee shop, they have seven restaurants, plus they also have the hideaway only restaurant which obviously we didn't eat at. Um, the buffet restaurant was amazing for breakfast, they had like a huge selection of food, but we did find that lunch and dinner at the buffet wasn't as good, like quite often the food would be like stone cold and just didn't really taste very fresh. Um, but in terms of the restaurants, Sophie's favourite was the teppanyaki, and that is the only restaurant you have to book into, um, and you basically just book the day before. Um, I was super proud of myself at this place because I caught the egg in my mouth with my eyes closed. That was my proudest moment of the whole trip. Um, but the Italian restaurant was one of my favorites for lunch and dinner. I also really love the Caribbean restaurant and the steakhouse. Um, and there's also a little food truck by the pool that's really good for lunch. The sports bar in the lobby does a great burger. What I will say though is all of the food at the resort is very heavy on garlic. So if you have a garlic allergy or intolerance like Sophie does, you'll need to tell them every single time you dine. Um, in terms of bars, there are three, no, four, yeah, four pool and beach bars. And then there are two cocktail bars up in the main building where like the restaurants and entertainment are. 
we really loved the martini bar and my favorite was the coconut martini i had so many of them um but i was also like super impressed with the range of cocktails and the non-alcoholic cocktails at the pool bars i'm not actually a massive drinker so during the day i kind of mostly stuck to the non-alcoholic ones and they were like ridiculously tasty they were like really fancy smoothies it was amazing when it comes to entertainment and activities usually i find it super cringe at all inclusives like it's not the best but on our first day we very quickly realized that there were basically so many activities that we wanted to do that we literally had to write out an itinerary like we had to write an itinerary on holiday because we wanted to do so much um you will not be bored here at all every day there's yoga dance classes pilates there's like hit classes there's um aqua aerobics um and there's also like a very well equipped gym um our favorites were the caribbean dance class the sunset yoga and the sunrise yoga sessions and then every evening they also have entertainment so they've got like a michael jackson tribute act karaoke an amazing country singer and then on the monday night they have a soccer night soccer soccer basically caribbean music it was so much fun the entertainment was like actually the best i've ever seen it on all inclusive and like all of the bands and performers were so talented we just had the best time we had so much fun um there are also two daytime foam pool parties at the main pool every week um we went to one of them and we had the best time it was honestly incredible like it was just so much fun it was such a vibe everybody was like at the bar drinking cocktails dancing in the pool there was foam everywhere it was a vibe it was great we like also really loved that you could basically choose what sort of experience you experience you wanted so if you wanted to be on the go you can if you wanted to join in with all the party stuff, you can. But if you do just want to chill and relax, you can easily do that instead as well. Um, and like the party stuff tends to happen at the main swimming pool, but the tiered pools, which is like a much quieter area, if you sit there, you can barely hear what's going on at the main pool. So you can definitely chill if you just want to chill. Right, now I'm going to cover off the day trips in this section, so this is probably going to be the longest section. Um, but when it comes to day trips, we did both the Toot Bagay full day trip, and then also the Sunset Pitons half day trip. We also did the Friday night street party, and we also walked to nearby Pigeon Island. Um, we booked all of our trips through Tui, but we found the service between Toot Bagay and Su Sunset Pitons very different as they were run through different companies um, but I'll touch on that in a little bit first I want to talk about the Friday night street party because this is a must do if you're staying at the Royalton um, it's only a short drive away you can pay 15 US dollars per person for the shuttle bus from the hotel and back again so the $15 covers both there and back and it was so much fun like I would also definitely recommend getting the later transfer bus though and then getting the last shuttle back at the end of the night because the party gets really good the later you're there all of the prices at the street party are in East Caribbean dollars so do not pay in US dollars otherwise it's going to be ridiculously expensive for you um, there's loads of food and drink there there's a DJ playing music but be warned the rum punches are so strong <laughs> like I literally drank half a glass and my legs went to jelly it was crazy it was so so strong um, like ridiculously strong but the party was so much fun and you have to do it so Toot Begay is a full day trip which is run by Nexus Tours and Sea Spray Cruises um, and it costs around, I think it was 145 US dollars per person. Um, it leaves early in the morning like 8am and they take you on a little shuttle bus down to Rodney Bay um, and then you get onto this fancy new catamaran and it takes you all the way down to Souf Soufrière. Um, and honestly, Sea Spray were absolutely amazing the whole day. Like, they were so much fun, they were really friendly, and the boat was just stunning. Um, and you see the pitons as you come into Soufriere, 
and oh it was so beautiful like it was such a moment when they suddenly like you see them in the distance and you get closer and closer to them um but yeah when you arrive into Sufria you don't really have any time in the town itself you kind of get straight onto a little mini bus and then they take you up to the sulfur and mud baths which are kind of in the volcano um and this was one of my favorite experiences you have to wear dark colored bathers and you also need to use one of the brown hotel's pool towels because the mud can basically like destroy any lighter coloured items. Um, but they have toilets and changing rooms there. It was just like a great place. There were like little shops there as well. Um, and But they say that if you cover yourself in the mud and then kind of leave it on for a bit and then soak in the baths to like rinse it off, it apparently fixes skin conditions but I actually had an eczema flare-up at the time it did not get rid of it so it was kind of disappointing I don't think it works but there we go it was an experience it was great but after the mud baths you then have a quick but very delicious buffet lunch at the morn you'll have to excuse my pronunciations because I can never pronounce anything the morn Kubaril estate and then they take you to the Turail waterfall. Um, I was in awe of this waterfall, like it's ridiculously beautiful. Again, they've got toilets and changing rooms there. Um, and the sea spray staff come with you and they're really amazing at taking photos of you like under the waterfall. But I won't lie, it was an experience, right? The waterfall was so heavy, like the water coming down onto you is so heavy. I need to show you my waterfall photo. <laughs> it ended up looking like this which makes me laugh a lot but it definitely is not the Instagram photo that I had been hoping for um I think I'm just like I'm too clumsy to get those kind of dreamy waterfall photos you know with like where you're posing with like an arched back and like all that kind of stuff no, I looked like this because I was so shocked. Like he told me to go under the water and it shocked me so much when it came thundering down to onto my head <laughs> that this was what happened. So yes, you have maybe 20 minutes at the waterfall um, and then they take you back to the boat. Um, and on the way back, you stop off to snorkel at the famous, again, my pronunciation is gonna be terrible, the famous Anne's Shastanet Beach, <laughs> which honestly it was beautiful. I mean, look at this water. Um, I did choose not to snorkel because it was quite busy with like loads of people, um, but I did have a lovely swim out further away from everybody else and just had like a moment of solitude bobbing up and down in the water, like floating on my back, staring up at the sky. It was so dreamy. Um, and then on the way back to Rodney Bay, you pass through famous Marigo Marigot Bay. Um, and that's the last stop of the day of like the whole trip. So this is where you can see the film location of Dr. Doolittle. It's so cute. Like it's just, it's such a cute little bay, but you do just sail in and out. You don't stop or anything. Um, and then you head back to Rodney Bay and then the little shuttle bus takes you back to the hotel. Um, but honestly, like, I so recommend doing the Toot Begay trip. It was my favourite trip, and I just thought Sea Spray was a, just a nicer, better company than the company that runs the Sunset trip. Um, and the boat was also way nicer and way newer and much cleaner. Um, I also just thought, like, value-wise, the value that I got from Toot Begay was just so much more than the Sunset trip. We did the Sunset Pitons cruise like two or three days after the Toot Begay and it was honestly it was nice enough but it just wasn't my favourite like it's a half day tour starts around 2 p.m and it costs 110 US dollars all it is is snorkeling and that's it really um I just don't think you really get much for your money compared to the Toot Begay one like Toot Begay is only what 30 dollars more and you get so much more from it um the Sunset Pitons cruise is run by Carnival Sailing um, and they go from Castries, which is the main city or main town. And it is quite a long journey to get there from the hotel um, because you basically, whereas with the Sunset, whereas with the Toot Begay, it's just people from your hotel and your transfer bus. On the shuttle bus, 
down to Castries, it stops off at loads of hotels to pick up other people. So the journey can take between like 45 to 90 minutes, depending on how many stops you have to do to pick up guests from other hotels. Um, also the boat itself, it was just really old. It wasn't well maintained, like it didn't feel clean. Um, and the layout just wasn't as good as the sea spray boat. I just wasn't a big fan of the carnival one. But anyway, we sailed down to Sugar Beach where we snorkeled. Um, and I did enjoy this because Sugar Beach is gorgeous. Like, oh my God, it is so gorgeous. Um, I basically told myself that if I come back to St. Lucia, I'm going to do like a couple of nights at the, Vi what is it? The Viceroy Sugar Beach Hotel, which is like the super luxury hotel at Sugar Beach. Um, but yeah, and the snorkeling just wasn't great, if I'm honest. There isn't a huge amount of reef there. They also make you wear life jackets, even if you're a strong swimmer, which was weird. Um, but I, again, I just, I think I've been spoiled with snorkeling because I used to live in Australia. So I've snorkeled at both Coral Bay and the Great Barrier Reef. But seeing Sugar Beach and the Pitons up close, that was really special. Um... But yeah, like, the other thing was with this trip, you also don't actually see the pitons with the sunset. And given it was a sunset pitons cruise, I kind of expected us to see the sunset with the pitons. But by the time the sun sets, you're actually all the way back up near Marigot Bay. So that was also kind of disappointing, just because I assumed that we would actually see the pitons at sunset. Um... Anyway, so I'm just not sure that I'd actually recommend the Sunset Pitons cruise. If you do have to choose just one trip, I would definitely 100% do the Toot Big A trip instead. Okay guys, we are almost at the end. Um, but before I finish, I wanted to cover Pigeon Island. Um, this is something more in the local area of the hotel. It's super close to the resort. It's well worth doing. And there are two routes to walk there. You can either take the 20 minute route or the 40 minute route. And the 20 minute kind of cuts around the coastline and the 40 minute one goes, it like follows the road. Um, we were told to take the 40 minute one because apparently it's safer. Um, and also it just felt really good to do some proper exercise after spending most of the week just eating and drinking an insane amount of food and drink at the resort. Um, but Pigeon Island, it's really beautiful. It's not actually an island anymore because they built like a man-made causeway in the 1970s. Um, but it's part of the St. Lucia National Trust and it's also really close to the Sandals Grand Hotel. So if you walk there, you can kind of peek into the Sandals Grand, which looks very fancy. Um, anyway, you have to pay an entry fee to get into the island, which I think from memory it was like, 10 US dollars or 28 Eastern Caribbean for tourists um, and it's a national park so it used to be a British fort and there are loads of ruins that you can see there's an old fort um, and the beaches are incredible so I'd really recommend bringing your swimmers and a towel so you can go swimming and then just outside the entrance gates there's like a few little bars and shops and honestly the bar was so great for having a cool drink before doing the walk back um, and in total, I think we spent like three hours doing the walk and then also wandering around the island and having a drink and a look in the little shops. Um, but yeah, definitely worth doing. Try and fit it in. It only takes three hours um, and it's kind of nice to see something in the local area. We honestly had the best week at the Royalton St. Lucia and I would 100% go back in the future. Um, but I would definitely do 10 days instead of seven. Um, it was just everything about it was great like the staff was so friendly everything was just beautiful the food was really good um, and for me it was well worth the cost especially when the entire holiday including my spa treatment including the day trips all of it was cheaper than my four day trip to Miami last year <laughs> all of it was cheaper than that um, the one thing I will say though is it feels very different to other Caribbean islands, which kind of surprised me. It just didn't feel as like Caribbean y as Antigua, the Grenadines, Barbados, etc. I don't know if that really makes sense, but like I think it was just the lack of Caribbean music. Um, everywhere was playing American pop music, which was a bit weird. 
and I kind of missed having Caribbean music everywhere. Um, but if you're staying at the Royalton, I really hope that this video has helped you plan your holiday. Um, it is a stunning resort, like I would recommend it to everybody. Um, but if you have any questions, please just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer as quickly as possible. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, especially if you've made it this far. Um, please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or found it helpful in any way. Um, and click the subscribe button and you'll get notified immediately whenever I, tr whenever I post any more travel videos and luxury hotel room tours. Anyway, bye!